Hey there, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the More Sensible Podcast. This is Mo here, if you just joined us for the first time, thank you very much. I have two special announcements that are in line with this month's theme on relationships, especially fun- focusing on singles. Before I go into the announcements, I'd like to announce that today's episode marks the conclusion of the four-part series we've been doing on single relationships. If you are here to do so, go catch up on those previous episodes with majority talking about the female perspective i came talking about the male perspective we did a special one with my friend and her dad for me and her dad chief hazan on you know fathers and the importance in you know in parenting and then today's episode will be the final part of it so if you're here to do so go catch up on those episodes so coming this saturday this is june 26th okay we have uh, series which is going to be our culmination of what we've been talking about so far on single relationships and we will be um, having a live panel discussion with a group of inspiring guests some of whose stories have been featured this month we will discuss some of the issues that we have raised so far like challenges of finding the right person handling family and societal pressures the challenges and opportunities for being single dealing with loneliness and so much more we'll also be examining the cultural phenomenon that is kevin samuels the high value man <laughs> as we explore his school of thoughts and averageness high value men or realistic female expectations more than women and the different approaches of both sexist relationship as always and true to the most civil style we will be having um it will be a simulation discussion with lots of lessons for both single and married people so check out our instagram page either at mosible m-o-s-i-b-y-l or at the merciful podcast to you know, check out them to get the zoom link for that conversation and then the second but definitely not the least announcement is i have something great for you are you still single and searching have you tried popular dating apps and still have no success at finding the one would you like to meet recent men and women who could be potential partners if you answered yes to any of those three questions then you need to get matched to me more Get Matched With More is an initiative of this podcast, The More Simple Podcast, where I link up single people interested in serious long-term relationships. Each applicant will be duly rated by myself and my team before being matched to a suitable partner based on their suited preferences. To participate, visit the website www.moresimple.com backslash get matched with more or you can just click on www.mosibyl.com and look at the tab for where it says get matched with more to sign up for free and it could just be you all right then enjoy the show all right guys um welcome back to the show i am sam between two lovely wonderful gentlemen um he's not new to the show you want to introduce yourself C dog. And this is our wonderful friend, Dr. Shonake. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, uh, but sorry. Uh, my name is Nibukun. Uh, my friends call me IBK. Uh, yeah, I've been good friends of Tolani and Tyro for some time now. I'm just visiting and passing through. Yes, he's visiting us from the great state of um, Washington, Seattle, Washington. So, um, last time we talked, we focused on medicine, the practice of it disillusionment, how to build support for um, those that are trying to get into residency. And anyway, so today we're just talking about um, relationships. You know, uh, I'm here going to be supporting my female folks because I like to really get to the heart of some very serious questions. And I couldn't think of two um, better people to talk to. Um, T-Dog, as you know, we married for 10 years and everyone's going to step into that institution soon. By God's grace. <laughs> By God's grace. <laughs> so I think let's just let's just go let's let's just go straight into um into that. So congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. Um doctors are usually rated as hot kicks in the dating market because of the trustee associated with the profession. Before you finally met your fiance, how easy or was it difficult for you during your dating years? I've actually never thought about that. Uh, well, there's an opportunity to think about it. Like how, uh, well, how, what, like how easy was what? Like during your dating years, how how easy or difficult was it, was it for you when you were dating? Before you finally chose the one and you were embarking on this oh, okay. almost married journey. Um, 
I, I don't think I ever really thought about it. I was not actively looking because, you know, especially in the medical field, it's one thing to the other. So I was job NYFC. I did um, a graduate degree in public health. Uh, from there, I went to the residency. So, you know, I, I probably had um, maybe more pressing issues at the time. And, you know, I happened to meet her. So it's not like I was actively looking and to, you know, then say it was difficult or easy. I don't know. That, that in itself sense. is a privilege. Privilege also. I mean, because for females, almost like you have to go hunting for that right person and you club them over the head and you drag them into your lair and be like, be mine. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, isn't, isn't it the guys that chase? But it seems like you, on the other hand, but you, you, before you met this person, you had dated, right? So the thing is, the thing is, it's not like he was, it's not like he was the, I, I feel like when people have difficulty and, okay, no, let me just speak for myself. I feel like, um, it's, it's just interesting because there are some, there are some people I probably met along the line that I was probably a bit interested in. But like I said, I was probably not actively chasing anyone. And and I would say they... Maybe at that point in time, maybe they were seeing someone else or they weren't interested at that point in time. I know whatever the reason was, you know, it wasn't a, it was just... So once I get signals that, oh, this other party is not interested, I, you know, I'm quick to reverse. But... Over time, I see that they then become interested, but at that time, I'm not available. Yeah, yeah so I, I just, you know, so I, sometimes I think people are just interested at different points in time. And that's why it seems like, I don't know, I, you know, I can't talk, I can just only speak for myself. But at least with my own anecdotal, you know, this is not true, so I need to, you know, objective data. But in my own anecdotal experience, I think I've met one, two, three ladies that I was interested in, but they were not interested. By the time they became interested, either I was already in a relationship or I was in a different geographic location that I didn't think it was worth it trying to you know, pursue the pursue relationship. relationship and all of that. So. Okay. How about you? I actually know a little bit about your dating history, but for the best of doubt, for those that don't know, the dog, the kind of tea dog, just me, but what's your dating blueprint, Mr. Dr. Adelipa? Well... <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't think I had a significant dating history, really. You didn't think you did? I didn't. I mean, well, I was... Proud. I wouldn't say... Well, I was. I had met more female friends, I would say, than male friends, you know, back in med school. And I got particularly close to quite a, quite a number of them, but maybe two of them, you know, where I got pretty close to. And it was pretty interesting. The first one... You know, I wouldn't mention names, but those who know, know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was kind of, yeah, I don't think I should. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, let's stick to your, <laughs> let's, let's stick to the question of what is easy or difficult for you during your dating years? Well, I, you I, had, I never dated, I, didn't, I never dated you anyone. Follow, like a long years where you never dating, but you're in a situation with somebody. A situation that's a new one. I've never heard of that. Oh, situation, yeah. situation, situationship. Yeah, yeah, I didn't come up with that word. I wish I could take credit for that, but I didn't come up with that word. That's it wasn't like a yeah, just something that was so close. They used to yeah, like yeah. pray together, do everything together. Oh, I thought. Oh, but you, it was. It oh, wasn't you are dating. Of, don't don't mention her name, please. Let's give her some privacy. Yeah. yeah. So we were just very good friends. That's what it called situationship. It was never declared, right? And then you went. I never the, even thought. I know about innocent, anything. Yes. I was so innocent and gullible, but you know, years later, just reflecting about the situation, <laughs> I realized that I probably led, you know, the yes, led her on. And you didn't do it purposely. No. So I've seen that a lot in relationship with you know my friends. They like a guy, and they're waiting for the guy to make the move, and he doesn't make the move. Fine, no, it's he's in another relationship. Do you think you guys do that like purposely, or you just don't? You just regard some girls as like friends, as in girls are... Uh, I'm saying that because some of my friends are, have been in that situation where they really like a guy, they spend time with a guy. And for us ladies, when you spend time with a guy, it feels like there's something going on, you think. But then you find that maybe he didn't even see you as beyond... You're probably in a friend zone. 
You didn't even know. Yeah, I think my, let me just um, speak from my experience. Uh, I was young and innocent and I didn't know any better, you know. Um, but I would say maybe I had a faint idea during that time, you know, when this person in question uh, decided to draw boundaries and started to want to withdraw. And that was my only friend then, you, you know, back in... I felt like, oh my God, like the world was ending, you know. I didn't have anyone else other than my twin brother at that point, you know. So did you make you want to get closer to her and declare your affection for her? Well, at that point, you know... This was before, it was before me, way before me by Yeah, our, our friends, so this person's friends uh, was... Uh, I actually spoke to her and I can I, I actually wrote the letter <laughs> at that point. <laughs> I had no clue what I was doing. I was like, you know, uh, friendship or whatever. I could have future prospects. Who knew? Who knew? You put that in the letter. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you read them on bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wasn't so, thinking. I, when is the well, like the insidious kind of demon level? Demon level. The one that is demola. Yeah. It was just a messed up situation. I... I was just immature. I was young, probably like how old was I? Less than twenty. Yeah, she was young. Was she? Was she old? She was young. Yeah, but women, you know, develop quicker than. <laughs> okay, so let's just round up this particular question. For girls that might be in this kind of situation, what would you say? Do you do you, do you think they should just call it what like make the move and say? Hey, what's what what's going on with us? Try to feel like you like the guy, and the guy isn't saying anything. I think I think so. If I were to answer that question, you know, because it's kind of now looking at being putting myself in the female shoes, it's kind of like I was kind of blocking other potential yes. guys from dating or getting to know her. know her. So I, I, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have done. If she that. had come to ask you directly, like, hey, are we dating? Oh, that would have actually helped to open my eyes and, you know, help oh. define things and, yeah. What do you think, Dr. Shrek? I think communication is always a good thing. Um, good communication is always a good thing. So, uh, if, if um, I don't know, I, I feel like it's it's kind of, you know, being a guy is probably going to be difficult for me to advise a lady. But if... <laughs> I think ladies are usually more straightforward if they don't like the guy. <laughs> you wanted to <laughs> apply that straightforwardness. Yeah, exactly. If the guy is coming around, they don't really entertain him as much. They might not pick his call. They might not respond to his messages as you much get the and message. everything. So you know, the guy gets the message. So and you know, I, I don't think people have qualms letting the other person. So you know, at the same time, probably because they like this one and they are being soft and everything. But if if you feel, I don't know, like. If I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just blotting out. This is not something I've ever thought about. That was a being collective a guy. to share right like there. Like, yeah. As much as we be vocal about saying we don't like a guy, we should try and be vocal about. But I think there's also, also that fear of rejection on our part. Like, you might yeah. lose a friend in the process. No, uh, but I mean, so if if the guy is saying, oh, um, oh, we should go out, or are you um, less, then you can like ah. This is they are coming to see me. What's going on? You know, you just put Something him like on. Yeah, like, put is him this a date? Put him on the spot. Are you asking me out on a date? Put him on the spot, please. You know? well, don't, don't, don't think that my come off as being desperate when you do that. Desperate. Like, to me, I I prefer women that, you know, no, but, I'm not but, saying they should. Women no, have but, their pride. But, but, but wouldn't it, it would, it would, it would weed off someone. If, if a guy, so mm-hmm. the thing is that if a guy, I don't think anybody should take my what I'm saying seriously. I mean, I'm just talking. Why not? But, but having said that, if I think if a guy really likes you, and those are his initial um, initial actions, you said, "Hey, not 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 like in a um, confrontational way, just playfully." Mm-hmm. You get. So if a guy likes you and you do that, it's not going to push him away. In short, then it even gives him the avenue to even talk, do you get? But if a guy just wants to be around, wants to, then if you say that, that might, you know, I don't, you know, saying that wouldn't you make you look more desperate to a guy that wants you? I don't know. Right, right, right. It shouldn't make you look more desperate. So in a sense, probably you lose a friend, but 
if it was just going to waste your time and block all that guys, then what's the point of yeah. that friendship? I don't know. Yeah. So um there's some sayings which I'm not gonna repeat here. Men are S C U M. These are common slangs that men have earned over the years for their promiscuous ways to put it mildly. Why do you think men tend to have this reputation? Even though I know that women this, this, they do that, I think we've talked about some examples. But why does it seem like you know um, men tend to have those kind of you know um, taglines, especially in Nigeria? And if we, if we look at Nigeria, even some within group differences, like people say, your men tend to be this, evil men tend to be this. What's with men and, and just? I think it's a factor of you know whether it's Nigeria or different tribes like even here in the US there are lots it happens I think it's just the human nature you know everybody has the potential to cheat you know if you and it's it's sad you know they probably even people in the church unfortunately you know anyway I don't know what to say about that <laughs> but yeah, I think every, everyone has the potential to cheat, um, even though they know it's wrong, you know, but I don't know. What do you think? I'm not... So, I think a specific question is, why why is it more common yeah. amongst men? Yeah. Um, I, 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 don't, I, I don't find it particularly, um, you know, I, I, so I think men and women are different, you know, in certain... Men are just more interested in sex period like you know the women are more interested in the emotional connection you know a, a, a common a common complaint the husband may have or will probably be that his wife isn't giving him enough sex a common complaint your uh, wife could have is that he's not romantic enough so I need that different so I mean, the, you know, our, our priorities of those needs—not that men don't want romance, not that women don't want sex—but in terms of prioritizing it, they are totally different. And so, in a sense, it only makes sense that because men want it more, they are more tempted about it, and women kind of they, are, they kind of have like different. Um, Temptations, do you get? So it's, you know, it's usually a, a man can even step out and have no emotional connection with we do. Man is stepped out to it and still come home. But a woman is different. Maybe there's this emotional cheating first mm-hmm. before she finally steps out physically. But these are still broad generalizations. These are just broad. These are just stereotypical broad generalizations that probably do not apply to everyone. Just you know, just as a platform of just discussing it. So I think that makes sense in the sense that, and you know, the same thing, they will say women are more tempted by money. You know, these are just generalizations. So to me, it's not particularly surprising. I think it has always been that way. And I I don't think it's necessarily going to change. Having said that, of course, we should all strive towards good behavior, regardless of whether you are a man or a woman. Regardless, we should all strive towards good behavior. But, you know, I, I think men are just... Just wired that way. And, and again, probably because there's less um, repercussions for us as well. Um, because, you know, hardly would a man drop out of school for getting pregnant. <laughs> you can see, it's, 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 uh, medically, it's actually easier for the woman to contract diseases than the man. I'm not yeah. saying these are the reasons people do it. Uh, you know, the the burden seems to be oh, on the woman. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's just the way I think about it. So I don't. I, I don't see. I think I, I, that's just the way I think about it. I don't even of course. And, yeah, I kind of agree with what he said. You know, and you know the fact that I could see how easily, you know, even married men in quotes you know go outside of their house and you know step out of their house let me borrow IBK's words um yeah if the wife doesn't feel emotionally connected with the husband you know then there's that frustration there's that tension you know between husband and wife the man is not getting his needs the wife is not getting her needs met 
And then what happens, you know, either party can step out and start cheating. You know, the, the man will try to probably rationalize, you know, why he's doing that, you know, even though he knows that is wrong, you know. And that's how, you know, things go in a downward spiral. I think, I think it's almost like a, it's almost like a trick for, for, these are very, very narrow. This is a very, very narrow discussion, but it's almost like a trick. The way I also think about it is that, um, a man's sex drive makes it, you know, if the man is straight, it makes it to the point where he would always need his woman. And a woman's emotional drive, if that is the right answer for that, makes it to the point that she would always need a man. So in a sense, it would balance each other. It balances balance each other. That the, the in man, a perfect world. yeah, that in a perfect, in a in a good relationship, the man should strive to be romantic and caring and emotionally available for the woman, so she is responsive to all the sexual needs. And the woman, at the same time. Is like a chicken and egg, but at the same time, you know, when a man is responsive to his sexual needs, a man, you know, it's kind that's of like this. Think it should happen. That's what but, should happen. Yeah. This, as provided, you know, no one is stepping out or seeking this fulfillment from outside the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, those are very good points that you guys raised, and uh, I think the, the key here is just go for victim to. But there are bad people out there, both female and male. And when we say words like men are, you know, or women are, I think we condense the, the title of someone's life into that single narrative and shouldn't be. So, yes, there have been some bad things that have happened and all that, but people are more than that, right? So, um, my next question to both of you is this why are good men hard to find? And I say this because. I do have a lot of wonderful friends, you know. If I could marry people, I'll marry more than one person, girls, just to make them know that, okay, if marriage is really what they want, then this, this are really nice people, good people, but it seem not to be, you know, finding good men. Why does it seem like good men are hard to find? Like, I know a lot of them that have dabbled into the, you know, app, like using apps and dating. I find that at the end of the day, these guys just want to have sex and move on to the next person. Why does it seem hard that, you know, good, good men are hard to find? And then, whereas, why are good ladies everywhere falling, you know, prey to these bad guys? Bad guys. Let's call them for what they are. Some chungum, chungum, chungum boys. Well, get up and they never want to grow up. They just want to keep living in the land. Uh, I, I don't know. So, if... So, it's like there's something... I don't know. I, I feel like women generally maybe gravitate towards the bad guys. I mean, I wouldn't use the word bad. I would just say towards you know, um, like the stereotypical traits: tall, dark, and some as much rich, rich. You know, yeah. has a very good job, independent, has his own house or his own apartment, has a nice car, and those are. I, I don't know, like. Because you know, if if there's a profile of if there's a profile of ten, ten guys, right? There's a profile of ten guys, and ten women we have to select these guys. It's more likely that the ten would select the top three, you know. And so usually, I, like I said, I've never looked for a man for a, as a partner, so I don't know how difficult it is. I don't think about yeah, but, yeah, I don't know how difficult it is. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to kind of belittle anyone's yeah. um, experience with this. But you know, just as an outsider looking at it, you know, I've, you know, I have you know friends that are guys, and there's always this. It's it's always seems like it's this number of guys that are getting most of the girls. Right? The girls. Yeah. And the other guys who are good guys, but probably not that suave, is that the word? Suave. Suave, suave you, know, well, you know, not that sexy sleek. or sleek. Then, you know, I mean, they will still get someone that they will get married to, but they are definitely not getting as much attention from women. Yeah. So sometimes it's it kind of, so I wonder, is it is it that, yeah, is it that men are hard to find? 
or, or or it's the women are looking in the wrong direction yeah exactly maybe this guy that doesn't look all that now you get uh, probably in a few years time so it's possible that they probably overlook somebody that wasn't like in the packing that they wanted yeah I mean even even I personally like I said I, I said that earlier that by the, when I'm interested the ladies are not interested it's probably when a bit down the line that they become interested and by that time you are probably at a different point or you're with someone else or in a different geography and you're wondering what's you know, I, was trying to, I, was, I was trying to talk to you at that time but, you know, why do you think they were not interested in you then because do you think your packing I mean, wasn't solid then maybe like I said I was chasing writing exams working probably chasing paper. yeah chasing the paper and everything so I probably wasn't the I, you know to be honest I, I don't know but that's the way that from my anecdotal experience that's what I've seen I've noticed that is a certain number of guys that kind of get most of the action. Then the other guys that you know probably are probably on the more conservative side. They go to church and everything. I mean, they will still have. They will still meet someone that they will get married. I'm not saying they are without women, but they are not. Yeah, it's not. It's definitely. It's definitely not the same. And so, you know, I mean, I mean, they have. have it's. So I don't know. I, I so I don't know whether it's. Maybe, maybe a more accurate thing would be the men women want are not acting. Do you get that? Probably the guys that are not that all that now. Probably in a few years' time, they are you know much better looking. You know, no one is truly all um, them. So, are you saying they should just settle for less in a way? So, so why do we say it's settling? I just use that word because that's what it will come off as. But even though I don't, I didn't mean it that way. Mm-hmm. But you know what I meant by. It? Almost like think of this guy in the long term, like on the long run. Like I mean, if if the if if the person you are looking for doesn't exist, is it really settling? Mm. <laughs> for the one who is available, practical, and you can build a happy life with. So is it really settling? It's it, it's only settling because of the standards we've placed. I don't know. I, I don't see it. Like I understand why a lady would see it as settling because you know. I guess from a young age, the Prince Charming, um, in all the cartoons and the movies we've watched, this there's this standard guy. I didn't really have that gun. I didn't think about men like that. Men, I don't know. Yeah. So I, but you know, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's really, is it settling? Because I've, I've time and again, I mean, there are even some ladies that have chased to the certain point that they just said yes, and I, and I didn't enjoy the relationship. You get. Was too forced. Yeah, because it was too forced. Then later, later, and this was like in med school. Then later, later, later on, they are like, you interested. know, <laughs> very interested. You know, saying that oh, they made a mistake then, oh, like, you know, like, but you know, the price. The thing that the the more successful a man is, the, the higher the price you need to pay to get him. How about the woman? It's the same thing now. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's not that we, you know, a, a man's value traditionally, a man's value is 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 career success and probably his physical attributes. A woman is probably a bit different because we, not many men would look at you. Not that the woman is chasing the man because of the money, but women want security for sure. You get. I call him women go the girls. No, I didn't say that. I said security. Just Those are totally different things. Those are totally different things. And, and <laughs> women want to be... T- I, I feel like... So women want to be taken care of by their men. Not because they're not making their own money, but they just want, you know, the man to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're making huh? their own money and everything. So... Uh, oh, what? Oh, yeah, definitely. But a, a man looks... A man looks at it differently. Probably, you know, especially if he has money. It's not necessarily... He doesn't look for a woman for security. You see, you know, the same way a woman will look at the man for security. So it's just, it's just, it's just, and that's why, you know, like younger women, it's the same thing. You know, the older and more successful a man gets, it's like his options improve. Um, for a lady, you know, when they are younger, they have a lot of options. And just from his mathematical perspective, in the sense that, a 24 year old can date a 25, 26, 27, 28 year old. She can date anybody older. But I guess the older uh, woman gets, except you can date a younger man. But you know, 
I feel like the options. Well, kind the, of, the younger one would date too. The options are narrow. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. The more successful the woman is, the more she's the more intimidating she might yes, be to a man. Yes. You know, so all those things come into play. So I, I don't feel, I don't know, but, but mom, I, I feel like so that's what I'm saying. That if you get a man when he's still struggling. I, I, shine I, him up. Yeah, yeah, and you shine him Put up. Some paint on him, on it. Put some paint on him. Put some paint on him. You know that kind of stuff. So I don't see it as settling if this man has prospects. So we need to it's like real, it's like it's like real estate, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly the activity we did today. Yeah. You are going to get the priority at a certain time, and in four or five years' time, after you put some work in, it it's, you it's that, yeah. But if you want to go for that very nice it's house actually, now yeah. you know how much you have to put down put down but will it grow now. in the next five years at the same rate you want it to grow to get your money properly yeah. so you know those are like the more those those things are not obvious I guess when you're on a dating app and you're looking or you meet a guy at church or you meet a guy at a place and you know I'm sure a lot of guys have these kind of stories where when I was hustling she didn't even give me eye you get the guys I say almost most guys have that story that when I was hustling and drinking, guy, you know, they won't even look at you. You get because they are looking at, you know, and I think it's just natural. A lady wants someone that, you know, is of a certain I caliber. Think it's different from, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, it's, I, I 100% agree with everything you said. You know, I, I think that it's tricky. Women want security. You know, nobody wants to come and get into a, you know, union and a relationship where they can't be taken care of. I, I, it's even difficult because you can even you can even partner up with that man, and maybe because success will leave you. So that's another thing. So that's another thing. That thing. Person's basket. Yeah. And so leave me, yeah. Yeah, but our, our story was different. I think we were just fortunate that we got to meet in med school and yeah, you guys met much, much. Oh, well, earlier, yeah, before those um, market, I don't know if I'll call it market forces, came into play. You know, in med school on campus, it was a bit more pure. It was yeah. just the personality of the person and right, so right. Do you think if you we're, as you are like this and as I am like this, do you think we could have gotten together? Mm-hmm. I don't think so, too. We've gotten together like how? Like if we had met outside. Just right now, the way he is, the way I am, I don't think so. Why, why is everything for you? Let me know why you think I'm not of your pedigree anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to die tonight. Just your friends, why is he? No, I mean, yeah, it's, I can imagine, I, I can, I can see how men, you know, could find it difficult finding someone that they really like because sometimes you could feel like they might be interested in you because of maybe your, success or because of like not because of who you are really you know I'm asking to talk about me in particular no. like why would you think that if we if the way you are right now the way I am right now mm-hmm. you, we won't have gotten together if we didn't have any prior knowledge of each other that would make up how all the stars align like we didn't we met in med school how would how would That's you true. predict probably in the same circle um, I probably. I, mean, I feel. I feel. I feel. I feel some of the best. I feel some of the best relationships are those from campus, yeah. because yeah, you more. get to know this person at their granular form. You get to see their friends. So it's not like they are showing you one side and they have different kinds of friends. You actually see the kind of friends. Like a you see, yeah, you see the kind of friends they keep company with. You see, you know, you have so much more information, and that's before finance and all those things come into play and as long as they are um what's the word faithful people and everything then you guys can grow together and it's not you know no one feels like you know um you know Tyrod probably didn't have money then he had some change he had some change but you know not you know he wouldn't he wouldn't be thinking you are coming because of the money or anything yeah. because right you've been there from way back you understand and yeah, so I I think from I think from my own very narrow male's point of view, I, I feel like l- ladies, you know, I think more ladies go for is this part like two three top guys, 
and those ones are receiving all the attention. So From the twenty year olds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it only I think it it only you know if they are not religious people or anything, it only makes sense that they want to be with as many women as they can. You get that. and you know and are they good partners if they are used to that kind of lifestyle? Are they um, you know it's 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 kind of but it's not obvious because this guy is so fine, he's tall, he has this beautiful car, he has all these other mm-hmm. things. And you know, it seems but if, it might not be of substance like that. Yeah, exactly. If, if I guess if you can step back because you know, dating someone for how attractive they are and actually being a married partner for a life that is going to be part boring. I have two different two different skill sets. Yeah. I guess, so, I guess a, good, a good set of questions. What kind of advice would I give women like some of my friends who I know um, they really want that desire to be found by someone, you know, godly, but they seem not to have gotten it. How can they position themselves to attract, you know, the kind of man that not necessarily they, they want, but the kind of man that is right for them? I think they should, you know, modify their search criteria. You think they are too lofty goals they have? I mean, no, sometimes it's actually just. Is sometimes I think it's just it, making like as long as it's breathing. No, no, no. I think sometimes no. sometimes it's really it's really a matter of there are probably not so many guys that uh maybe marriageable or stuff like that. I, I mean, it's I think sometimes it's truly that, but I think at other times. It's, a guy that is okay might be passing through, but you know, he doesn't meet your criteria, you don't even give him a chance, you don't, you know, you don't as you don't get to know him past past the way we evaluate people in ten seconds, you know. Yeah. You don't get to see face value. Face value. So because I, I I I know some um I know some yeah, it's just it's just yeah, I don't like I just feel like what we are used to, especially in this social media, in this social media, sometimes some of my female friends, sometimes when they meet a guy and I think this guy is good, I didn't know she's not going to like him because he doesn't have that, you know, I just know. I like the bad ones, like the badish ones, like the ones that are, they have. No, just someone that is smooth, someone that, you know, is interesting, is tough, but it's just that sometimes these people the people that are very good at that are people that have had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, a lot of practice. They have a lot of sample size. Yeah, it's people, that have, it's people that have had a lot of sample size. Uh, you know, so it's... Yeah, it's, I, I like nerds. I don't know. I, I I communicate with bad guys enough, but I don't think I want to be with the bad I like nerds. I like people that are, you know, confident in themselves. Okay, yeah. Let me say, don't even say confident in themselves, but people that people like him, he's my respect. Yeah, but you know, Taiwo would not qualify as a. I'm not a nerd, though. You are a nerd. Taiwo would not qualify as a. Um, a sw- like a smooth talker. Yeah, Taiwo. No, he's smooth talking. Like, his game has gone up since he got married, but originally he was not a smooth talker. Yeah, so, I mean, if it's up now and it's still like this, then um, that was really. So, you see, not. You see, I can, I can tell you for sure that not many women today would answer Taiwo. That's just the honest truth. Besides, to me, the the, the only thing that probably gives Taiwo, um, like at least in the marketplace, that is tall, one, and, and is a doctor. He's cute. Oh, I got game, you know. I got game. So, as I was saying... You don't have to say that, but it's cute. I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got game. But, not, but even, even, even so, not, not many... I see what you mean. Do you get yeah, yeah. But Taiwo is not, is not the... It's very okay. Don't get me wrong. But of if you want, I know. but if you want to, if you want to compare, if you want to compare Taiwo to men that really are into, you know, the kind of shirts they wear. Yeah, 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 the chains. They're very all those about, things, yeah. about everything. They look so. You they get down. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Taiwo, you know, so I can bet you that that you know someone like that would meet a lady and Taiwo would meet and they wouldn't give Taiwo eye. Oh, yeah. Then it will now be then that guy plays them. I don't know. Yeah. Mm, you might be shocked. <laughs> might no, be. I think I know what you're saying. Like, there's a way... And I think sometimes... And, 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 like and that yeah. bad boy... Yeah, I think and, the media also and, and, to that... Yeah, and, 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 and guys that are rejected are not even... Guys that are rejected... Because 
Except, except Good guys finish last night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good guys finish last Except, except there, there are no more rejection. That's the funny thing about this conversation. We, we can talk for like 30 minutes. I'm not even talking about the guys that are being rejected. Because yeah. those are like just by the way, like, <laughs> They don't even, nobody even discusses them because they're all focusing. <laughs> I think I think women women need to, you know, stop looking at the outward appearance. You know, in terms of oh, he has to be tall, he has to be, you know, a what lawyer, he has to be this. There? But is that what God wants for you? Oh. You know. No, no, but you have to have a certain chemistry. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no, 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 don't, 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 don't get me wrong. There are some, I think, I think there are some, hold, hold, hold on, I think there are some basic things, some, some core values that you need, the person definitely yeah, needs to meet. I think the funny thing is that even, even I feel like you're narrowing. Some, sometimes, sometimes women will even give this guy that she's not feeling a chance and the guy still messes up. So <laughs> this thing is not, it's yeah, not in a vacuum. Not yeah, yeah, I know, but then, but then I feel like women are kind of shortchanging themselves and they're saying that, oh, he must be tall. Like, who told you that who God has made for you must be tall? Yeah, I wanted a tall guy. I know. But I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not saying that I all the time. I mean, I know. I know. God says, you know, we should delight ourselves in the Lord, and He will give us the desires of our heart, mm-hmm. right? But then, you know, no. I, I, th- I, th- I think it's okay to have your list. It's very okay to have your list. But when you meet someone in real life, mm-hmm. when you meet someone in real life, get to know you them. Give them a chance and get to know them. Then, in your evaluation, you can say that you know what. This guy is so so and so. It seems like he has some prospects. It seems it's this and this. Is it worth it eliminating this guy based on, based on height? You, but it's not to have your list. We just see that we're like no. Yeah, yeah like it, it, some. People, I mean, some some people even get upset that the guy even had the audacity to approach them. Mm. Right. Okay, so girls, women, listen to this. Um, I think one thing I've learned from the conversation is just give a chance to explore. Like, give yourself... I remember when I was talking to my therapist about some of the things I do, and sometimes I tend to be rigid in certain, you know, behaviors. He said, She said to me, give an opportunity to explore new systems. Like, so, almost like, there's always wonder out there. But if you're used to eating a particular kind of food or doing things a particular way, you can be missing out. We're not saying compromising your standards or your values... But, you know, give a chance to explore the possibility of being surprised by somebody. So finally, you are getting married soon. Tita, any man-to-man marital advice you'd like to give? Yeah, we don't have to give it over the show, do we? But anyway, yeah. Wrapping up. Um, you have 10 years experience in this institution. Oh, but anyway, yeah, she's always right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> She's always right. Well, some. You don't say that like you mean it. You're just saying that because. Sometimes she's always right. Sometimes she's always right. Okay, got it. Like maybe ninety-eight percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, and you know, never, never go to bed. I mean, this has always been my motto or my slogan. You know, never go to bed without with unresolved conflicts. So I should probably apologize to you now for what happened this evening. <laughs> no, we're not going I'm to talking of your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're beating me at uh, FIFA. Anyway, but <laughs> I didn't say anything. Mother <laughs> Tayo. <laughs> but I beat you at Street Fighter, though. But anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, never. Yeah. Always resolve conflicts. You know, don't go, don't let the the sun, you know, go down on your rock. Or how did the Bible yeah, say? Your anger, your anger, yeah. On your anger. Um, yeah, always. Uh, so what I've learned about marriage is do it. I think you know whatever you do, you know, do it as unto the Lord. Right? It's it's a ministry. It's a calling. It's you're serving that person. The person is not. Like your slave, you know, your servant, you know, you're a team. So you have to like work together for a common goal. Um, so do whatever you, it takes to make sure that it's kind of like a partnership and not, because I see lots of, I mean, I was that way too when I first got here, you know, the feeling of, oh, I'm the man and 
you know, the wife is the one that's going to cook, do everything and slave away and I just come and, you know, just come along with not do anything. Yeah. Yeah, I took a lot of um, bickering and <laughs> and complaints and everything and counseling, I guess. And prayers. Oh, prayers. I guess her prayers are answers now. Oh, yeah. So if she wants bickering, she can do. But my own suggestion is that talk freely. Talk about the difficult things. It's not always easy. But just talk about difficult things and genuinely care for that person. A woman will move the world for you if they know that you genuinely show you know, that love that you have for them. And yeah, find your trustworthy third partners. Third parties in marriage. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah, all that issue of, oh, no third party, no third party. Trust me, a lot of people have suffered from domestic violence or have even lost their lives. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah it's... I think that the Bukun is, the Bukun is pro. Mm. Well, pray what? Marriage. No, this is my first one. <laughs> <laughs> I love scouts. Yeah, people, marriage, marriage changes you. It brings out, it could bring out the worst in you. You know, you never knew, you never know that you, uh, you know, ha- are, have this issue until you get married. You know how short tempered I got married. When I say short tempered, like, I have a short fuse on him. So marriage will test you. Yeah. Especially the first two years. <laughs> yeah. But you know, all the best. You're marrying a friend, so that's all matters. Alright, this was it. Thank you guys for um I don't I feel like we talked that we didn't talk. Like we said a lot, but we didn't say a lot. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for um chipping into the conversation about just men, relationship. I think moving forward. I'll just encourage my, my girlfriends to um, reevaluate their circumstances as far as their environment. Maybe that guy that they left on red, guy that might not really be all that yet. And just being really open to experiencing you know, newer things. And hopefully they can, because these are really wonderful people and I know they really do want to find somebody to settle down with and you know, build life with. It's just really difficult. And there are people that are moving forward in their careers. So that pool is already narrowing. But, you know, hopefully they're able to get one or two things from our discussion points for today. Any final words, guys, before we wrap it up? Tamara, I'm sorry again. I forgive you. Oh, jeez. All right, guys, this has been (laughs) the Most Simple Podcast. Don't forget to check out more episodes on the website. We're now on Podbean. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and, um, yeah. If you'd like to be on the show as well, um, just let us know. And have a good night. Good night, night. folks. Adios. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Morrisable Podcast. Well, guess what? There's plenty more where that came from. So visit our website at www.mosibyl.com. That is www.mosibyl.com where you can find hours of other binge-worthy episodes just like this one. And while you're at it, please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Podbean as it encourages other awesome people like you to listen to the podcast as well. We are now officially on Podbean. It has an app. You can catch up on missed episodes and also get a notification when we have new episodes. Do you have a question for our guest, feedback on the episode, or a suggestion for a future guest? Then please get in touch with us by sending us an email at talktomo at mostable.com or connect with us via Instagram at the Moral Civil Podcast. Cannot wait to hear from you and thank you so much for always listening. Mm-hmm.